Welcome back to the Baseball Blue Book podcast. My name is Eric Wobanaw, the president of the Baseball Blue Book, and excited to continue our series of coaches and their journeys. Uh, we are with Coach Torres out of Point Park College up in the great city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I always like talking to people around the Western PA area. Uh, so, Coach, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit about my background and, and Point Park University as a whole. That's great. That's great. Before we begin, I want to make sure I encourage everyone to subscribe to the channel, share and like. I love your comments. Uh, and uh, we can be found on iTunes and uh, Spotify as well for your audio pleasure. All right. So today with uh, Coach Lauren Torres with Point Park. Coach, why don't we, uh, we always like to begin uh, with kind of the journey. Uh, your journey to uh, a head coach. And so you can start wherever you'd like. Some coaches like to start from the very beginning um, and some like to jump right into where they are today. So it's kind of up to you of where you'd like to begin that journey. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll give you the short version. I've, I've been coaching 27 years. I'm going on my 15th year here at Point Park. Um, baseball has giving me basically every, everything I have. And, and I, um, you know, definitely want to share some of, some of my thoughts and, and, um, you know, anytime I get a chance to help someone, I, I, I take the opportunity. I grew up in Puerto Rico and growing up in Puerto Rico in the Caribbean, you know, baseball is a way of life. It's like soccer in Europe. And that passion, you know, led me to, to, to play and, and to excel and to just baseball was more, of a, of a lifestyle for me. Um, um, I, we moved as a family to South Florida when I was 15. So I went to, I was blessed to go to high school, to go to, go to Nova High School in Broward County in South Florida. Was fortunate to play for Pat McQuaid, who's getting inducted in the ABCA Hall of Fame this upcoming winter. Um, I, that, he was um, my mentor, it continues to be my mentor. And um, so I, I had a, a blessed high school career, which led to me playing uh, in South Florida at a small college, NAIA, Trinity International University. That university closed and uh, no longer exists, but I was a three-year captain. And when I graduated um, as a three-year captain, I did a lot of recruiting and was able to, to help the coaching staff and they wanted to keep me on board. I went to school for, for elementary education and thought that that's, that's a path I wanted to take. But once I got my foot in the door coaching-wise, um, I, I was hooked. I was hooked, and, and, it, and it's a very rewarding career. Didn't make a lot of money, and I think none of us do early on. I, I, um, I was working as an admissions counselor, assistant baseball coach at Trinity University. I did that for three years and uh, took a full-time assistant job at Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia. I was there for about a year and a half. Um, before I got my first opportunity to become a head coach at the age of 27. So I was young and didn't have a lot of experience. The program I took over had only won oof, a handful of games in the last three years they had played. Uh, so they were getting ready to terminate the program, and they took a chance on a 27-year-old and said, hey, here's our, here's our, our, our last, uh, the last chance we're going to give this thing. Uh, so I took a job in Chicago, Illinois, uh, Judson University, and – it turned out to be a blessing. I, I was um, um, young, made a lot of mistakes, but but grew grew a lot. I took that job. I was 27, and I took that job, and I had never seen snow. It was just uh, 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 you know, <laughs> faith, what I wanted to do, having a clear vision of what I wanted. And quick story, I get a flat tire on my way up to, to Judson. I was driving up from, from Savannah. And 10 minutes before that, on the radio, they said, coldest day of the year in Chicago, minus 20. And um, I'm sitting there with, a, with with jeans on and a sweatshirt and nothing else on. And I'm changing the tire. And as I'm changing the tire, I'm questioning every decision. Uh, <laughs> you know, why am I going? What am I doing? I'm, I'm sitting, you know, 80 degrees and, and, you know, year round in Savannah. But once I got to Judson and I, and I started implementing uh, that vision I had, and once I sat in front of that team, I, I knew that I, that I had made the right decision. I left six or seven years later and, the program was competing nationally, and I, I was able to build um, something that 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 that's still special to me. Um, from there, I, I come to Point Park University, which has one of the best uh, NAIA traditions 
in the in the in the nation. Yeah. And I've been here 15 years, blessed to continue to do what I love, and have never worked a day in my life. That's great. That's great. A uh, lot, lot of uh, a lot of great step uh, or stops uh, uh, on your way. Um, you know, you talk about knowing it's the right fit. Um, you know, you have to love it. Uh, you, you've gone through some some times of you know not making a lot of money. You're now where you're at. You you had some challenges of, of decisions that you were you questioned. What 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 makes NIA or the NAIA unique? and special for you? I mean, it sounds like you've spent most of your career kind of at the smaller schools. Um, what's it, what's, what makes that important and unique in your mind? The NAIA talent wise is, is the equivalent of an NCAA division two. Um, I think that the NAIA has, there's more freedom. I don't have dead, uh, deadlines or dates to follow recruiting wise. I can recruit year round and, um, there's more flexibility to bring in a, a transfer student, uh, more flexibility on the eligibility side, on the bylaws, um, and so the, your livelihood as a coach is, you know, it's a, a bit easier to 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 um, to have. Um, you know, the, it runs one of the best World Series, uh, baseball-wise, outside of Omaha. Uh, I think that outside of Omaha, I don't, I don't think there's another one that that's as co- uh, um, well put together as as the NAIA. But um, it's it's a Easy to transfer to, um, a little bit lighter on the on the requirements to um, to recruit and run your program. That's good. That's good. Uh, talk talk a bit more. You said it doesn't have to follow the the, the NCAA rules. Uh, a little bit more flexible uh, on recruiting. Uh, talk about from a scholarship perspective. Are there limitations on the scholarships, and and how does that work from from your perspective? That changes uh, institution to institution. Um, you know, we're blessed to be uh, funded well here. Um, on both the scholarship side and 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 and, um, and the operational side, um, you know, we're our history. I mean, with that comes the responsibility of us putting together together a product that competes nationally, a team that that represents our university well. Um, but much like the NCAA, there's there there are limits, and I think that there's you know a, a big movement to to uh, for for associations to do more for baseball. We have to right. feel a, a 25 to 35. Uh, person roster uh, with a max of 12 scholarships so we have to and not and not everyone has 12 so you got to break that down to 25 to 35 student athletes and sometimes even more so that's that's a challenge that baseball college baseball has across the board and we have it here um, but it works the same way as as the ncaa does what do you love about baseball and coaching Again, I, I growing up in Puerto Rico, I was hooked. I, I've never known anything anything else. But um, coaching, the the impacting the lives of the student athletes, that's that's the most rewarding part. I, you know, about 300 uh, schools suit up uh, for for the you know for for the NAIA every year, and only one's going to win the national championship. So if that's your 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 you know, if that's the, your only measure of success, then you're going to be disappointed. You're more, most likely going to be disappointed. Um, so I, I measure by, um, you know, the are they graduating? Are they growing as men? Are, are, are they living our program with no regrets? And then and, and we do a good job of that here. I think that I enjoy them coming back as successful alumni and, and getting the, the wedding invitation or them bringing their kids around. And, you know, I, I've with 27 years coaching now, I, I I've been coaching longer than my players have have been alive. So, um you know, you start to, you know, to generate, um, to see them become successful members of our community. And that's what I enjoy most about uh, on the coaching side. I think that early on in my career, the perspective was different. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're so caught up on, on tomorrow, on winning, that you forget to enjoy the parts to make the whole possible, the journey, where, you know, being where your feet are. Uh, I tell my players all the time, you know, put your phone down. You know, you got your teammates in front of you. You're having dinner. You're not going to have this, you know, down the line. You, you know, it's a quick college baseball career that you have. And, and you got to stay in the moment. So heighten awareness to where you are, um, whether that's practice or that's the classroom or your social life. Uh, we have to be um, where, our, where our feet are. And, and I think that I have um, I have um, my perspective has evolved into more family impacting the lives of the student athletes and and 
winning being a byproduct of 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 us doing everything first class and and and, and seeking excellence, which is you know the never ending um, strive for, for for to get better. That's that's a that that that's a great answer. A lot of things in that answer uh, that we'll get to in just a bit. But my, I always like to do the follow up of what what is the most challenging part of being a coach. Oof. Um, I, the 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 changes on the on the recruiting, I think I think are a challenge. Uh, that's something that um, that has evolved. I think that we all have our 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 financial challenges, right? We all have um, we all want a little bit more here and there, and and and. But I think that um, you know the recruiting has has um, evolved and um, to less loyalty with the transfer portal to less um commitment right. and that generating um we're we're a, a program that feeds off synergy and family and there's a family feel to our program that i think is second to none uh with the diversity that we have and the cultures that we have um and that's becoming a challenge so that together with the fact that um you know the 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 communicate the ability to communicate that kids are coming up um, are lacking. It's challenging. Uh, their leadership skills uh, are not as um, developed as they were in the past. So we have to once they get here work more on that. Uh, those are two big challenges: is the, the their lack of ability to communicate, and that comes from you know the technology and the pandemic. They were they were at home for a whole year without a social, um, you know, any kind of social um, time right. and right. So that's that's becoming a challenge, you know, and it's getting you know harder over the years. And, and and I'm getting older too. I think that we do a good job of making sure that we keep younger assistant coaches that can that uh, that there's less of a generation gap between them and the players. But but it is harder um, to you know to communicate and and, and they're, they're recruiting too. No, that's a great answer, Coach. Um, you know, I've I've asked that question quite a bit, and we talked about you know, the challenges of recruiting and the the challenges of, you know, the difference between now and what it was before. You, know, you get a lot of people writing books and having blogs and having conversations about, you know, the old days, right? The Sandlot type type uh, atmosphere versus oh, yeah. what we have today. Uh, but I think you bring up some really good points on that is the ability for, for communication and the loyalty co- uh, the aspect. Um, you know, the, the portal was supposed to be a really good Thing for players to give them a little bit more flexibility, uh, not you know, not get locked into some commits. Uh, you know, expand a little bit on what you mean by the loyalty and what it used to be like, and and I'm sure that you still kind of focus on what it what those things were that made your program successful throughout these years. How how do you navigate the the change? Are you changing or are you? looking for people that fit more of what you know works for you both we have to stay true to ourselves but we also have to evolve with college baseball or or, or be extinct we we have to continue to evolve and we're using the the transfer portal we're not using it as much as other universities are and and we're making sure that 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 we're we're looking for long-term commitment we're looking for players that are going to feel comfortable here uh, that we want that fit our, our, our culture, um, but we do also have to put a product on the field that competes nationally. So we we use the transfer portal. Um, you know, I just you know it, it was intended to be a, a great thing, but now we're much like anything else. It, it, we're starting yeah. to see some of the challenges that it also brings to the table. Yep. On the communication side, I think that uh, we do a good job of doing doing a lot of a lot of community services and and, and meeting as a team and having one on one meetings with the players. Um, because at the end of the day, it, you know, no, not too many of them are going to be asked what their GPA was after they graduate uh, or what they got on a particular class. You know, uh, what's the substance behind, you know, what's the knowledge and the substance that you can provide that particular um, employer? And, and can you communicate during an interview? If you can't do that, then it's going to be hard for you to um, bid someone else out that's 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 uh, looking to get that job. So uh, we 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 try to make sure that they're that, that we're providing ways for them to grow and, and, and expand on, on, on the ability to communicate. That's great. That's great. Hey, before we go into the next, uh, next part, and uh, I just encourage everyone to subscribe to the channel, uh, share and like, uh, again, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, we are on BSBL 
uh, Blue Book on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Uh, you can find us on iTunes and Spotify. We are with Coach Lauren Torres, head coach at uh, Point Park University, in the great city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and we're talking about um, kind of the, the, the transition, you know, of kind of looking at how you traditionally look for players, uh, but also leveraging some of the new technology, because I think you put it perfectly as if you don't change, if you don't, if, if you don't move with the times, then you, you'll become extinct. Uh, and, and you're doing a great job. One of the things that you brought up is bringing in some young, young assistant coaches that kind of um, can help fill that gap. With all of this being said, Coach, uh, what, how do you dictate what your team is going to be like? How, what's the message that you're telling your assistant coaches? What are the primary things and, and character traits of the players that you're expecting them to find and you're, and, and you're bringing into the program? So two, two things. With, with, the, with the identity of the team, we don't know what that's going to be until – until even maybe a couple of weeks before the before the bell rings, every team has their own identity. How are we gonna win with this team? Um, it, it, you know, happens later uh, um, rather than 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 soon that that during the recruiting process. I think we go out and we find the best possible uh, player that we can find, and that is not just um, on the athletic side. We're looking for the student person player. You know, a student first, a person of character, and a good athlete. And and we want we're not asking for a 4.0. We're not asking for a 3.0. We want you to stay in sequence to graduate and to have the desire to graduate. Um, on the athletic side, you have to be able to throw, run, hit, and do the things that 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 we need them to do uh, to compete nationally. And 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 character wise, we want them to stay within team policy to to um, to have um, priorities and 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 and, and you know and and, and and be a, 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 a person that uh, that's that's easy to get along with, and 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 that's gonna be a team first person. Um, so that yeah yeah uh, that's 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 what we're looking for. Um, I, we I I tell my assistant coaches when they're, when they're out, we're just looking. Um, we we first find out if the person can play for us on the athletic side, and then we get to know them uh, with time and phone calls and interaction and the visit. So that we can find out if it's a good fit on both sides. I tell recruits all right. the time where you're wanted and where you feel comfortable with the people around you. And so I, you know, I think I think it's important to to have that visit, to have the player come to your practice because I, I at that time I can compare them to 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 other players we currently have and give them an extended uh, amount of uh, repetition so that we can see if if we see projectability. Um, yep. I don't like to use potential because, because I, I, as I always say, potential. Someone that hasn't mastered his craft, what's their projectability? Uh, where do we see them? Um, um, you know, granted that they do everything that we're asking them to do, and they continue to chip away at their goals. But, um, but our assistant coaches go out, and, and, and myself, and and we're looking for that that player that can impact our program and help us compete nationally. And we we recruit. Uh, locally, uh, we recruit in the U.S. and we recruit internationally. So to compete nationally, I think you have to recruit nationally. And we have players here from Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. We have Cuban Americans from from Miami. We have players from different states. It is a very diverse program. Um, but when you recruit the student person player, um, and they all come in with the same mindset. So it's it's special to see all those cultures come together. Right. Um, for- greater good of the team and for something bigger than themselves and when you see that happen that is that is special and and um i think that's true to, to a lot of programs uh, when they see all those cultures and, and 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 they start hanging out uh together for 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 reasons other than where right. they're from i think that's really good i i there's there's probably no doubt in anybody's mind there um what each person is like their 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 skill set or what the team chemistry is going to be like might might be different as everybody comes together. But if you're focused on the t- on on the on the student on the player uh, or student person and then player, uh, everybody's kind of at the same level. Then, right? You're bringing in a good student. You're bringing in a good person. Obviously, the the player themselves uh, that that's a given. One of the things that w- comes up a lot in in our comments um, is coaches always talk about good character. Um, you know, we are looking for this and the comments come in of if they can play, they can get away with whatever they want. I, 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 
I, I, I obviously disagree. And I, my, my two cents of this whole thing is the, the coaches that I have on and, and particularly you uh, coach Torres is that's always a given, right? It's, it's um, if you're a really, really good player, I can't imagine that you let the character side slide. Why don't you talk a bit about that side of it? Well, you know, even once they're here, we're, we're quick to discipline, but very slow to uh, terminate and give up on someone. I think that, um, you know, how, how do we create um, discipline is, is, is how do we create change? Um, right. We, we um, you know, now if we have, if we find a couple of players of the same ability and it really rarely happens and we think that they, you know, we have to choose one or the other when it comes to giving out athletic aid, then we're going to choose the one that that that's able to communicate that 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 we feel that he he, he he's a he has um, how to win awareness. Um, you know, we talk about uh, having a player that has that. Um, you know that and that's important to us. But um, at the end of the day, we're going to have a meeting at the beginning of the year, and we're going to lay uh, the bylaws down, and we're going to say we're 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 not putting up with with. with with failure, we're we're not putting up with a lack of discipline, and 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 I think um, most kids will adjust to that. Um, and I'm not saying I'm I'm we're going out to, um, you know, we're bypassing the character part, but I know that uh, when the players put in a situation to be successful, when he's when he's got academic support, um, even if he's a marginal student, he's gonna do well. If we provide the, and if he's surrounded by people that want to graduate, he's going to do well. And, you know, some of those things, um, you know, the program takes on the, the, the mindset of the head coach and the assistants do, and, and they're an extension of the coach of the head coach and the, the captains are an extension of the coaching staff and the players are an extension of the leaders and all that. And there's a, a, a feel and a, and a, and a synergy within the program where, um, players that aren't um, doing those things are, 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 are just not going to make it there. They're, they're, and, and it doesn't happen very often. I think that uh, players do make the adjustment, especially at the beginning when we, when we tell them what was expected. And when you, and, and when you put those things on the front end, I think um, I don't think that you have, you know, too many disciplinary issues or, 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 or too many uh, times where we, where we look at a kid out on the field, and we, we're not recruiting him because we see a particular um, um, a weakness or, 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 or mannerism or, or, or trait. Um, is, it, is it important that they that they hustle that they're that they're good teammates? Yes. Um, is it a, a deal breaker? To me, it's not, and I might be alone here. I, it's it's not. I, it's not. And when we we bring him in on a visit, and once they see how we do things, they normally they normally um, adjust. They normally do. That's good. That's good. You talked about win awareness. Talk about talk about what what that means. How do we win awareness? Okay, so we're looking for players that are competitive, strong, competitive, strong before technique strong. Um, players that love to win, that love to play. Um, you know, I, I think that that's um, some somewhat um, the the appreciating. You know, uh, these days with the with the travel teams, they play so much that um, they're immune or to wins and losses it doesn't doesn't you know the wins and losses almost feels the same as you play so much i would uh, right. recommend uh, playing less and dedicating more more time to the weight room to getting faster to getting stronger which is the biggest issue transitioning from high school to college is the physicality of it um can you withstand the grind that we put them through and and i think and the ones that are physically fit and the ones that 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 are a little faster, they can adjust a, 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 a little a little sooner. Uh, it is um, easier to go from college baseball to professional baseball than it is to go from high school baseball to college baseball. And, and you know, the, the, those loopy line drives, those kids that are hitting 500 and 400 and 600 in high school, those loopy line drives in college, they're, they're going to get tracked down and caught. That ball that you hit through the six-hole and through the four hole in high school, it gets dragged down by the middle infielders. The pitcher throws a little bit harder. He locates a little bit better. Um, so that, you know, and 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 then the everyday grind. We're taking three hundred swings a day, and 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 we're we're in the weight room, and um, all that will will take a toll on your body if you're not physically fit. I think that um, 
players should concentrate, that's especially high school players, more on, on on the physicality. I would I would um, maybe spend less money on a on a travel team and invest it on a personal trainer or somewhere where they can have some guidance in the weight room and and make sure that they're physically fit enough to um to play college baseball. That's great. That was great advice, coach. I appreciate that. 